What's up everybody and welcome to another video. So in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at a brand new finish for me. We're gonna be working with Odie's Oil. And the reason I'm trying a new finish is because finishing has always been a little bit of a bottleneck for me. A lot of the time I'll finish what I'm working on, I'll get the shop all cleaned up and then I'll apply my finish. And after that, I'm stuck waiting there for anywhere from 30 minutes to a few hours to sand, recoat, and do the whole thing again. This is a one and done finish and it dries relatively quickly. So what that means is you prep, you apply it, and then that's it. So today we are going to be refinishing this coffee table with Odie's oil. I'm going to give you my thoughts on it as I'm working with it. And I'm just gonna take you through the proper application of it, or at least what I think is a proper application based on the research I've done, but I'm pretty sure I got it right. In front of me here, I have the tabletop we're gonna be refinishing today. This is actually a table from one of my first YouTube videos, so it's got kind of a special place in my heart. When I first finished this table, I used Rubio Monocoat to do it. And Rubio Monocoat is a great finish and I love using it, but I didn't quite have enough at the time that I applied it. So I really stretched it out and as a result, the finish on this table is just not that great. It's very matte when it should be a satin finish and it's kind of blotchy, it's a little textured. So the first thing we have to do today is just sand this all completely off so we can start again with a new finish. Anytime I have to do a lot of sanding, I always turn to my drum sand. It's really just the best way to quickly do large volumes of sand. I loaded up some 120 grit sandpaper and started stripping off that old finish. I'm actually really glad I got a chance to refinish this table because it had a slight cup to it that always bothered me. You can see it pretty clearly here, the sides are sanding first because they're up higher than the middle is. That's actually another benefit of using a drum sander. Not only does it speed up the sanding process, but it's also great for flattening things too. Alright, I think that's about as far as we can take it with the drum sander. Let's do the rest with a random orbital. Check this out. I just got a new sander. This is a Merca Duros 850, I think. Am I right about that? No. <laughs> this is a Merca Duros 650, and this thing is pretty dang cool. Let me explain. Inside this box is one of the world's best random orbital sanders. What makes it so special? Well, to start with, it's got a six inch sanding pad, which is pretty cool because it covers a lot more surface area while you're sanding. It's also completely counterbalanced. There's almost no vibrations when you're using it. It has dust extraction, and it also has its own specialized uh, sanding pads that are porous, which is amazing, amazing, amazing for dust removal. So this is basically a dustless system. I have been lusting over this sander for probably about three or four months, and I actually ended up getting it as a Christmas gift from my buddy Mark at Remarkable Works Design. I'm gonna include a link in this video to his video on YouTube where he gave it to me because I think it's a cool video. He's a really nice guy and you should check out his channel. This is actually gonna be one of my first times using it. I've used it a little bit, but not that much. So I'm really gonna put it through its paces today and I'm thinking about doing a video review of this. So if that's something you'd wanna see, let me know down in the comments and I will make it happen. As much as I love my drum sander, because it only sands in one direction, it leaves streaks that need to be removed with a random orbital sander. I started by sanding the whole table to 160 grit, and then I progressed my way up to 320 grit. I actually would have gone higher if I had higher grit sanding pads, but since this is a new sander, I don't have a fully stocked inventory yet. One interesting quirk slash feature of Odie's Oil is that the higher the grit you sand to before applying it, the glossier your finish will be. The 320 grit that I used got me a finish that was slightly flatter than a satin finish. In the future, I might try to go up to a 400 or 600 grit and see how I like that. So initial impressions are that this thing is awesome. I think this thing deserves a full review. So I will save all of my in-depth thoughts for that. For now, let's put it away and uh, get started on applying the finish. Boom. I'm gonna start on the bottom here because it's a new finish and if I screw up, I would prefer that it be on the bottom. If I have any learning to do, I'd like to do it where nobody's gonna see it. One thing that I've read is that you really have to stir Odie's oil quite well before using it. A lot of people get it and it's kind of separated. Don't mind, honestly, mine doesn't look that bad, but a lot of people get it and they say that it looks like it's separated and they're worried they got a bad batch. Also, side note, this stuff smells quite good. Should I be smelling a finish? They wouldn't make it smell good if it was bad to breathe it in, right? 
I don't know, everything I've seen about this finish says that you don't need to wear a respirator or any sort of like, lung protection while you're using it. Apparently the best applicators to use are these scouring pads. So this is not dissimilar from what you would uh, scrub your pots and pans with. The only difference is that those are a little bit rougher than this is. So this is an extra fine scouring pad. I got this big brick of them off Amazon for like 15 bucks and I'm just gonna cut it in half and that's gonna be my applicator for this finish. I'm just going to put a dollop right here in the middle of the table, so fold the applicator and I'm just gonna start buffing this in now. I will never get tired of watching a finish go onto raw wood. It looks so good. I'll say this for the stuff. This is a good workout. Apparently a little Odie's oil is supposed to go a long way, but I found that initially I had to apply a lot more than I expected. Once my applicator was thoroughly soaked in it, it did start to spread a lot better, but even a small applicator like the one I was using drank up a ton of finish, which is kind of a bummer when you consider that each jar of this stuff is like 50 bucks. The application was really simple though. I just buffed it on in circular motions until I got good even coverage, and then I went back and gave it a final buff in the direction of the grain. If you're working with this stuff, I definitely recommend wearing some gloves. It won't hurt your skin or anything like that, but it was really messy. Okay, so we're gonna let this sit for 40 minutes, and then I'm gonna buff off all the excess. And if 40 minutes seems like a long time to wait to you, it's really not. That's normally what I would spend waiting for the first coat of a water-based finish to dry before I sanded it and then applied the second coat. So if it's 40 minutes for one side, I am perfectly happy with that. Okay, so it's 40 minutes later and I might have put away my random orbital sander a little too soon. I'm actually gonna use it in conjunction with this wool buffing pad to now buff this table. Again, this was another cheap purchase off Amazon. Uh, it's a seven inch buffing pad. Uh, I'm gonna use it on my six inch sander. I don't really think that's gonna be an issue, but we'll see. So let's just stick it on there. And now let's buff this thing. I didn't think buffing it was gonna make this much of a difference, but this is, this is a big difference. This is way glossier now than just a couple seconds ago. That's crazy. I was blown away by the difference that the buffing made. The finish immediately got significantly glossier and took on a much more even look. Interestingly, it didn't really seem to matter how much I buffed the finish. Once I gave it a couple of quick passes with the buffing pad, it was basically as glossy as it was gonna get. I tried buffing certain areas for much longer periods of time and then comparing them to areas that I just buffed quickly and I couldn't see much of a difference. Oh, and you know how I said I was using a seven inch pad on a six inch sander? Well, it turns out that was a bit of an issue. At higher speeds, it caused my sander to vibrate more than it normally would. So I'd suggest you stick with a buffing pad that's the same size as your buffer or sander. Wow, does that ever make a difference? After the buffing, I gave the finish another 40 minutes to dry and then I started reattaching the table legs. That way, when I flipped the table over to do the top, the still wet bottom wouldn't be in contact with my workbench. Putting the legs back on was really painless since I had already drilled out all the mounting holes. I just fired in some 3 quarter inch stainless steel screws and I was good to go. Applying the Odie's oil on the top of the table was a little bit easier. At this point, my applicator was fully saturated and I finally got that great coverage that I've heard so much about. I actually saved this applicator for future jobs. I put it in a little sealed Ziploc bag so it wouldn't dry out and then stored it away with my paintbrushes. Once I was done with the top, I graduated to the sides. One nice thing about using an oil rub finish like this is that I didn't have to worry about drips on vertical surfaces. Again, I waited 40 minutes and then started buffing. I took my time and buffed it for a good long while. Like I said before, I couldn't really see any change no matter how long I buffed it for, but I figured better safe than sorry and maybe giving it a good long buffing is important for proper absorption and long-term durability. When I was doing the sides, I made sure to follow the contours of the wood as closely as possible as I didn't want to miss any areas. Thankfully, my fluffy buffing pad was pretty good at conforming to the contours of the wood, so I was able to get into all the nooks and crannies. All right, buffing complete. Let's take a look at how this finish turned out. Immediately after applying the finish, my impressions were quite good. It has a nice satiny look to it. Not too glossy, but definitely closer to a gloss than a matte. It also does a nice job of boosting the contrast of the grain. All the subtle variations in the color were really visible and not muddy at all. 
You can see the subtle hues of green and purple in the walnut, which I really enjoy. Make no mistake though, this is a really low building finish and has a natural look to it. Odie's oil will not fill in the open pores of your wood or even out subtle variations in its surface. If I run my hand across this table, it still very much feels like wood. Depending on the look you're going for, this might be a good thing or a bad thing, but I think it's important to know before buying this finish. In terms of color shift, it's actually pretty neutral. Obviously it darkened the wood substantially, but the whitest parts of the maple stayed relatively white, taking on only a slight yellow orangey hue, which is about what you would expect from looking at the jar. Honestly though, it's much more subtle than other finishes I've worked with, which is a refreshing change. All right, so it's getting a little late now. I'm going to take an hour to let this dry and clean up the shop. And then I'm gonna take this home and I will give you my full impressions on Odie's oil back at my place once I've had a little bit of time to digest and think about it. Sound good? Sounds good, right? Okay, so it's about a week later. We're back at home now. And I'm glad I took a little bit of time to think about my impressions of Odie's oil. So my initial impressions are quite good. I like the color of it. I like the sheen of it. It's a nice contrasty finish. That's all really good. Personally, my preference is towards finishes that maybe look a little bit less natural than this and fill in the grains and the pores of the wood a bit more, but that's a personal preference. And honestly, as far as natural finishes go, this one is quite good. If it stays looking like this long-term, then this is probably gonna be my go-to finish from now on. But there's a key word there, and that's if. Initially, I was gonna make this video a review of Odie's Oil, but now I'm thinking I really need to make this video in two parts. So this is gonna be the initial impressions part of the video, and in the future, I'm gonna do a more long-term review of Odie's Oil. So what kind of brought on that change? Well, when I was in the shop and I was working with it, I did a couple Instagram stories, and the response I got was quite negative from a few people. They said that Odie's oil looked really good the first few weeks that they applied it, but then after that, it didn't hold up long-term. So that's become a real concern of mine, and I don't really feel that I can recommend a finish if I don't know how it holds up long-term. I'm gonna use this table as my daily driver, and trust me, I am not gentle with my furniture. I don't even own coasters. I'll put plates on it, I'll put wet glasses on it, I'll, you know, I'll put my feet up on it, and we're gonna see how this holds up. After that, maybe I'll do some more specific torture testing and really put this thing through its paces. So if you guys have any ideas for tests that you'd like to see, let me know down in the comments and I will try to incorporate them into the next video. All right, I think that's it for Odie's Oil and my initial impressions of it, but there's one other thing I would like to talk to you guys about, and that is my Patreon page. I set up a Patreon page, and to be perfectly frank with you guys, I'm still building it out. I don't know exactly what functionality I'm gonna have on it, but there are a few things that I'm going to do for sure. One is going to be early uploads of videos. So as soon as I render a video, it'll be up on Patreon, maybe as much as a week before it appears on YouTube. Another thing I would like to do is have some sort of feedback mechanism where you can suggest future videos. And then another thing I'd like to do is set up some sort of forum where we can have discussions and I can help you with your DIY projects and home renovation projects. The main reason I'm setting up this Patreon page is because I would like to hire a video editor to help me create these videos. I'd really like to start cranking out more of these videos and the editing process is the biggest bottleneck for me right now. So if you'd like to see more videos from me, consider becoming a patron. All right, that's it for this video. If you liked it, like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.